Enough of this. Time for this. All right. Okay. All right. So yeah, like I said, like I was saying before, uh, Barry is a longtime uh, Python contributor who has given us Jython uh, back in the day, Mailman even further back than that, and much more recently. For those who are fans of PDB .set trace, it's much shorter, more memorable breakpoints. Got a punchy name, and uh, in Python 3, all thanks to Barry Warsaw, core Python contributor and bassist extraordinaire. Uh, he is giving our next talk, and I'm very excited to hear it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Um, so this is a shorter version of a talk I plan to give uh, at ICON. Um, I actually did the slides uh, last night, and about midnight I realized that there was a bug in Python 3.7. So I then had to take a short detour to actually fix the bug in one of the examples uh, here. So uh, and I should give uh, a lot of credit to Brett Cannon, who works for Microsoft. He's also a core developer. Um, he and I really collaborated on a lot of the API design and, and the implementation of this stuff. So, so import lib resources um, is a new library in Python 3.7. Um, this is a terrible motto, and I really want to have like something really punchy. So, if you can help me out with that, that'd be great. Um, oh, there we go. So, here's the problem statement, right? So, you have some code, and your code has some static files in there, right? And you want to be able to read them at runtime. Like, how hard can that be? Um, so, some examples of the types of static files would be templates that you want to read, and then fill some some placeholders in and print that out, or or you know send it to the web or something like that. Sample data in your tests. You've got some sample data over here that you need to read it when you're running your tests. Um, I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, certificates. You know, there's some APIs where you might have a certificate that you want to load uh, that has to be on the file system, uh, physical file system. Uh, and then things like uh, internationalization translation catalogs. Does anybody do any internationalization here and know how that works? So uh, you basically have like these files, and then you pass them out to your uh, translators, and they fill in the English to whatever language uh, mapping, and then you can stick those in your, in your source code so that if you know you're in uh, displaying something to someone in Italian, you'll get the right, right text for them. So these are all types of static files. There's lots more. But that gives you a flavor for what we're trying to do here. So, um, so if we look at like an example file system layout, right? we've got a, uh, a Python package right? called my package. It's got a dunder init in it. That makes it a package, yay. Um, it's got a couple of Python source code uh, files in it. And it's got another directory data that just has some sample data in it, right? And what you'd like to be able to do is at runtime be able to read that data. Um, so we can kind of take a naive approach, and a lot of code does this. Uh, we can import the package, and we can access a, uh, modules in Python have a under file attribute. And that's really handy, because that tells you exactly where uh, that file lives on the file system, right? So if we want to get to the package, if, in a for a package, it's actually the, the dunder init.py file is what this points to. So that's why we get the parent. We do some uh, relative path manipulation to get to the sample data, and then we just you know, open it and read it, and we're done, right? So that's the end of my talk. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, that has a problem. And the problem comes when you want to put this stuff into a zip file, for example. Something like PEX or this super secret replacement that we're working on, um, or applications like that. So now this file system layout, this package, doesn't live on the physical file system. It lives in the zip file. And if you try to take that naive approach, let's see. I've highlighted the problem area there. You get a nice trace back, because uh, Dunder file doesn't actually point to to a file system location. So that naive approach breaks. Um, yay, along comes package resources. Who knows about what package resources is? Who wants to admit it? Yeah, who wants to admit yeah. <laughs> uh, Package resources is a um, very old and ubiquitous library um, that um, people can use for this, for this particular purpose. Um, it has some quirks, which I'll talk about in a moment. But uh, the approach, this is Python 3. 
they're, they have a function called resource string, which in Python 3 actually returns bytes. Uh, it kind of lies to you. Um, but you can use it to say, OK, well, I'm going to call resource bytes, and I'm going to give it the package name, and I'm going to give it a, a um, path relative to the package, and it will return you the bytes. And that's great. But the nice thing is that that works for both the file system paths and zip files. And so, OK, we're, now we're really done. Well, not quite, because there's a bunch of problems with package resources. As anybody who uses it uh, knows, um, it has import time side effects, right? So, um, and those can be kind of significant because what it does is it actually goes, uh, traverses your entire syspath, and it builds up these working sets, and it just does a ton of work when you import it. So if, for example, you've got a command line tool and you'd like to be able to output dash dash help output really quickly, right? You can't do that if, if you have package resources. It's a pretty significant performance hit. Um, yeah, it's slow. Um, package, just in general, package resources tries to do way too much. So like it does namespace packaging packages for uh, Older versions of Python that don't don't have the TEP 420 stuff. It does entry points. It just does a ton of stuff. It's like overburdened with a lot of things, which makes which means it has a lot of backwards compatibility problems and probably will never get fixed. So we're on a mission to replace it piece by piece. It has some funky APIs. I, I mentioned the resource string, which really returns bytes. Um, it's got this. It's got this function that will return you a physical file system path no matter where that file came from. So if that file is in the zip file, it'll read the contents, create a temporary file, put the contents in that temporary file, and then return you the temporary file path, right? Which is great, except you really don't have any idea like when that temporary file goes away. It's some magic thing that package resources kind of makes implicit. So um, you don't actually, you can't actually just tell when that that uh, temporary file goes away. So it's everywhere. It's really difficult to eradicate. And we we that's one of the reasons why we wrote import lib resources, because we want to uh, remove one of the uses of it. And that's, of course, its biggest bug is that it supports Python too. <laughs> so um, OK, so but we can do better because we have Python's import machinery to help us. And this is where we get into import lib resources. OK, so this is a new in 3.7. Um, and it's uh, it's very logical, right? So you just from import lib resources, import read binary. That's one of a suite of functions that we provide. Um, and if we want to read binary data, that's all we have to do. We just give it a package uh, path, a Python package path, and the file inside that package that we want to read. And it will take either the string name of a of a package, or it'll take the actual package, you know, the module object, and if you give it a string, it'll just import it, and then it'll use that module object that you get. And that's it. Um, it works, uh, and that works for uh, file systems and zips. There's one caveat, and um, I'll explain uh, a little bit about a migration path later. But um, the one difference is that the thing actually has to be a Python package. So if you remember my uh, previous example with um, Dunder file or package resources, this under init.py wasn't required. For import lib resources, it's required. So data actually has to be a package. And that's not a big deal. It's just an empty file. It just has to be a It has to be importable, right? So package, my package.data has to be importable in order to get to that. Um, so here, here's just like a overview of the API that we provide. Um, this is all a read only. API, right? Because we're trying to read data out of these packages. So we, if you if you have text and you want to provide an encoding, you use read text. Um, read binary reads binary data. We can open a file uh, for reading the text out of it, or by, or reading just you know bytes. So these are kind of complementary things. Path I've highlighted here. That's very similar to the API in uh, package resources. It gives you a physical file system path. But unlike with package resources, this is actually a context manager. So now you know exactly when that temporary file goes away. Because when the context manager uses this in a with statement, you say with path, blah, blah, blah. And that gives you a file system path. And when the with statement exits, you're done. That temporary file goes away. 
Uh, one thing that I didn't talk about because I, I kind of don't have a lot of time here, but uh, uh, I'll go into more detail at PyCon is what we actually mean by a resource. So a resource is analogous to a file in a directory. Um, it obviously doesn't have to be a physical file, but the important thing here is that subdirectories are not resources themselves, okay? So in the previous example where I had my package and then I had data as a subdirectory, <coughs> data itself is not a resource, okay? So we have this method here to say, hey, is the thing that I'm naming an actual resource? And it will return false if it doesn't exist or it's a subdirectory or something like that. Contents is like OS Lister. You know, you say, Let, give me everything that's inside this, this package, and it will list everything, including subdirectories. So if you really wanted to sort of like do dynamic discovery, like for plugin plugin system or something, you could say, okay, uh, call contents, list all the contents of that package, and then for each one I could say, is this a resource? If it's a resource, then I can do something special with it. Otherwise, I can just ignore it. So that's a brief overview of the import lib resources. Obviously, the Python 3.7 documentation goes into a lot more detail. Um, ah, yes. OK, so uh, out of the box, Python 3.7 will um, support file systems and zips. OK, but there's a lower level API, or really it's, a, it's an abstract base class. And, um, that defines this lower level API that if you have loaders, this, how many people know sort of how Python's import machinery works at the base? A little bit, yeah, kind of. So when an import happens, um, the first thing it does is it tries, to, it, it, it creates a finder. And that finder looks over all these sys magical variables, right, to see, hey, can any of those uh, finders actually find the thing that you want to import. And once it finds it, the finder will return to you a loader, which actually loads the module and creates the module object. So uh, this, this function here, get resource reader, is defined on loaders. If the loader has it, then they can all play along. So if, for example, you have in your code a special loader that can read out of a database or off the network or something like that, something crazy like that, you can uh, make your loader play along with this, this API. And that's really nice because it's ex totally extensible. Um, uh, OK, so now to further our aim of killing package resources um, and helping you do that in your own code, we've backported the Python 3.7 library into a third party package that you can pip install it um, called import lib under resources. And that's compatible back to two, it's compatible with 2.7 and 3.4 to 3.6. And it actually does work with 3.7. It's just sort of a shim around the standard library. So if you really wanted to replace, uh, to start using this today, you can. Um, you can just uh, import import lib underscore resources after you've pip installed it, or you can use some kind of, you know, try, import, accept, blah, blah, blah stuff. Um, and I don't know if you can read this, but that's the, read the docs, and I'll, I'll bring that URL back up. Um, so yeah, OK, so that's it. Uh, that's import lib resources. I really encourage you all to use it, especially if you're using package resources, because we want to kill package resources off. So <laughs> that's it. And uh, <laughs> any questions? Are there any changes to the setup.py uh, argument, the one that says, like, uh, here's the data that I want to put into my bundle? The no changes there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and obviously, we don't handle you know things like entry points and things like that. But there are other packages out there that are taking apart, sort of deconstructing package resources and yeah, making life much better. Yeah. What was the bug you found in 3.7? Ha. OK. So um, so I'm, I, let's see, I was working on, I think I was doing this example, yeah. So I had this example, and I actually had a zip file. And I realized this crashed. Um, <laughs> I got a trace back. I was like, what? That's not supposed to happen. Um, and it's because, it's because zip import in Python, as Greg knows, is terrible. 
<laughs> um, it has it. You, what you have to do is you have to sort of um, uh, guess at exactly where the thing is because you have a zip. And the zip does the zip sort of has a table of contents and it has all the files. It doesn't actually have folders inside of the zip file, so you have to sort of guess about what is inside what folders. Um, and that's just the zip format, which zip itself is terrible. But um, <laughs> so uh, so the interesting thing was that was about midnight when I realized that. And so I had to quickly figure it out and put together a pull request. And then I had to ping Brett Cannon and say, you have to approve this before tomorrow so I can actually <laughs> not lie in my slides. And um, so he did that. And then today I was I was uh, backporting it to import, un import lib under resources. And I realized that code was fine. So, uh, but at least we have tests now because we didn't have tests for this before. So tests are good. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. If we go to your next slide, uh, where, yeah, this one. What did you try to not have that dunder in it in the under data? It doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing as the package without that would be okay. I understand it can be a black file. Yep. And remember, it's because we're we're using Python's import machinery to do this, right? So we made a decision. An explicit decision, which won't have won't change for 3.7, but it's possible that we may relax this. That the first argument to all those methods that I talked about is the package path, right? So it would be my package dot data, and the second argument we do not allow slashes, so we don't allow paths. Um, the other kind of constraint that probably won't ever hit anybody is that you can't have resources in namespace packages because they don't really exist as, as anything, right? So the basic idea is that the first argument to all those methods has to be important. So it has to be my package.data. And to import this, you need a dunder in it. And that's, that was a design decision. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out that most of the time when people use package resources to fetch a resource like this, they would say, package resources dot file from package where you would also have to have that done to it. Yeah. So it's kind of you know moved on for the most of the users. Yeah. So like like um in you can imagine in mailman we have tons and tons of sample data like sample emails and things like that. We just stick an under in it dunder init file in there. Good. So yeah. Is there a way to use this to stream a file as well for one of the uh, yep. So that would be the um, that would be the uh, open text and open binary APIs. They give you a file a file like object that you can read or read lines or do whatever you want. With yeah. So does the open binary and open text actually give you like a real file object? Like does it have a file descriptor or is it a string? Or type it 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 gives you a file like object that you can that you know implement. It's a basically a, a an IO dot Binary, what is it? Uh, there's a, there, it's an IO dot text file, text IO. So the, or, the question is whether it has a file descriptor. It may have a file descriptor. You can't guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> if you really need a file descriptor, then you're, you're going to want to use path, yeah, to create an actual physical file and then open that path and do that. Yeah. And if that's a very large resource, then it's going to try and clone as little as possible. No. <laughs> that would be an awesome uh, uh, PR, you know, to uh, improve the to improve that performance. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It basically uses the um, the uh, resource. There's a one of the low level APIs in here is get all the byte. If you know about loaders, have a get data method which says just give me all the bytes of that thing, and that's what it uses. So it creates the temp file. Calls get data, shoves all the bytes in there, returns you that thing. Is that a limitation of what the loaders offer, or is it like? Yes, it yes. The loaders currently only have a get data method. Yeah. 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 Um, talking about the namespace packages that you mentioned, how package resources affect that? Well, <laughs> um. You mean like why do people use package resources for namespace packages when they they do a lot and they don't need to in Python three because uh, if you just get rid of the dunder init then it's a namespace package but what they want what it's used for a lot is 
uh, stuff that has to straddle two and three, Python two and three, and they want to have these things called namespace packages, sort of, uh, for both Python two code and Python three. So what they tend to do is there's an API in package resources that they can put in their dunder init.py files that extends the under path, which is the variable in packages that defines where else on the file file system you can look for components that add to the namespace package. Python 3, as of 3.2, you don't need any of that stuff, right? So um, it's better just to delete those under under init with that pies and embrace the new way. <laughs> being on the import path and being involved a lot for every namespace, yeah. it affects you really. It, it really does. It really does. Package resources has to go away. Yeah. Cool. Uh, one of the questions, the, re the contents method, that can be used to enumerate every module and sub package underneath a top level package that you know about, but not enumerate all the top level packages. Right? Uh, it's not recursive. So you give it, you say. Yeah, you, you can follow it yourself. Yeah, you can follow it yourself. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of use it like OS Lister or Walk, OS Walk or something well, like you, that. You, there's no, you can't do contents of dot. Or you can't do contents of an empty string to get like what the top level. No, is. no. You would what you would do like in the in the in the uh, this example, you would say, give me the contents of my package, for example, and that would give you dunderinit.py, a.py, b.py, and data. Yep. Where where data would not be a resource. Right. Yeah. And you can try it today. You can try it today. Uh, Even on Python too. Yes, with the standalone package and yes. um, Python three seven. Beta 2 has the bug in it, because um, it's th beta 3 will have the fix in it. Um, so, And I really actually encourage everybody to pull down the Python 3.7 and try it on your code, because now is a much better time to fix bugs like this than once it's released. So yep. Very good. Meetup-driven development. Yeah. Love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Barry. Yep.